So you read the title, I used to think that 3D printing is only for useless figurines. It was back in 2016 when a few colleagues of mine pulled together to buy a 3D printer. They asked me if I wanted to join as well and I asked them, what do you even need a 3D printer for? You will just print useless figurines and then you will get bored of it, it will collect dust in a corner and that's probably it. Yeah, needless to say, my colleague printed figurines, he printed Batman Buddhas, he printed like 10 of them, scattered them all around his desk and that's what at least that one colleague all ever did with that printer. Then a few months later, the singer of our band also got a 3D printer and he was so proud of it and he showed us a vase he downloaded and printed that didn't even hold water, it was not watertight. And he was still so proud of that thing. And I asked him, what do you even need a 3D printer for? Can you design any models? No, but he was still convinced he wanted a 3D printer. But then something unexpected happened. The opening mechanism of my car's trunk broke. There was a tiny gear with two knobs on the top and one of those knobs broke off and it jammed the whole mechanism and a replacement part was around 100 euro to buy and I told my colleague of that and he told me you can just design your own gear and print it and replace that part and I was like, you can do that? How does that work? He just showed me that he uses Blender and he designed that gear for me, printed it, I put it in my car and it worked. I was totally blown away. So next thing I know, I need a 3D printer. Knowing nothing about that topic, I thought I needed the biggest machine you can get for a reasonable amount of money, so I bought a Creality CR10. I wanted to print everything in ABS because I thought that is the absolutely superior material. When it arrived, its setup was relatively easy, but I didn't want to print one of those useless figurines that came on the SD card with it. I wanted to print something practical. So I got online and found some upgrade parts for the machine that were readily available as G-code. You don't need to slice it. it, just put it in and print it. It has those bed adjustment screws that are very small and hurt your hands when you try to turn them. So there were bigger ones you can just put on the existing ones. Creality even adapted that design later on because they're just better than the stock ones. But that file printed all of them one after another. The thing is, I didn't know anything about bed adhesion, so they didn't stick very well to the bed. I also didn't know how to properly calibrate a bed back then or check if the first layer adhesion is good. It printed one of those wheels and then it went on to the next one, but then it didn't stick very well to the bed because it was not very good leveled. So I started to print over again. It First it worked, the next one didn't stick, so I restarted the print, I got another wheel and then it failed again, I got another wheel. What I was left with was four wheels, but I couldn't manage to print the other parts that were in that G-code. So I needed to learn what slicing is. I didn't even know the term back then, but I got online, did a bit of research and found a software called Cura. I tried it out and set my printer's bed size because it didn't have any predefined profiles for my model and somehow I managed to print that fan shroud. It was printed in PLA so it melted over time but I managed to print it. And speaking of things that melt, the gear that I put in my car's trunk got soft over time again and so it broke again. But now I had a 3D printer, I just needed to figure out how to print that gear in ABS. With a bit of fiddling around, I managed to make that print stick for just long enough to print that small gear. I mean, it was just about four centimeters, so it was printed reasonably fast. And after that, I reinforced it with some screws to hopefully make it never break again. And it's working since 2018, so there's that. Fueled by my first successes, I wanted to learn how to model myself. Since I didn't know any software besides SketchUp, which I used to model woodworking projects, I tried SketchUp for my designs. But it didn't even have a feature to export STL files for printing later on. So I need a plugin that sometimes worked, sometimes didn't, but somehow I managed to export those files. I designed some fixes for my drawers where I put on my Festool sustainers so they don't shift around when you pull them out and put them back in again. But since I didn't know anything about material types, I thought I need to print them in ABS 
And besides, the ABS I got already was perfectly fast tool green, so why should I choose something else? At that time, the printer stood in the room next to our bedroom, and I tried to print out those overnight, because it took a lot of time to print all of them. And I remember very vividly waking up in the middle of the night, hearing some noise, and I just thought, that must have been the print that fell off my bed. And yes, it was the print, it fell off the bed. I needed to start again, but not at that night, I went back to bed. So I was back to printing them one by one again to hopefully make it at least stick long enough to finish that print. And at some point I even tried to put a big cardboard box over the CR10. Mind you, that printer is huge, it has a build volume of 30 by 40 centimeters, so you can imagine how big a box needs to be to fit over that bed slinger. I managed to print them somehow, but I was very annoyed with all that bad adhesion stuff that didn't stick and the bad leveling that was very hard to do and that bed took ages to heat up, especially to temperatures for ABS, which is around 100 degrees. It took about 10 to 20 minutes to even get to temperature to start a print. So you can imagine how that feels when it fails and you have to start all over again and wait another 20 minutes for it just to start. So I did some more research and ended up buying a Prusa Mark III since it had predefined profiles, it had a PEI coated bed, even though I didn't even know what that means, and it had auto bed leveling and that was the main selling point for me alone. But it also didn't fix that I knew nothing about modeling software and SketchUp was not a very good way to proceed. So I stumbled upon a light version of the software Space Claim, which I never heard before, but it was certainly an upgrade to um, SketchUp. It worked good for simple designs, you even could round corners now, but it still was very limited in its feature set because it was not a paid version. So I did a bit more research and found out about Fusion 360, which is free for personal use, which was perfect for me. But it also came with a very steep learning curve and the information around it was scattered all over the place. With no prior experience, it was very hard to get into it. I managed to figure it out somehow, but I'm still learning new features every day that software is just so powerful. But it also helped me making many practical designs since then, be it woodworking or metalworking jigs, replacement parts, or even custom designs. Even the studio lights hang from the ceiling using printed parts that I did in Fusion. But even with years of experience in that software, I still learn new things all the time. I just recently found out that if you draw a line and then hold the mouse button, you will turn it into an arc. Never heard of that before. I'm learning! In my opinion, designing in 3D printing is something way more people need to know about. It just enables you to do so many things if you love DIY. I'm planning on making a guide that will help you getting practical results in the fastest amount of time possible. And you would do me a huge favor if you would let me know what you would expect from such a guide so that it will absolutely delight you. And if you need something totally different, also let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.